Hi, my name is Matthew Martinek. I'm the director of planning and capital projects for the city of Gretna. And the purpose of this uh, Zoom webinar, which I believe will be available on Vimeo or YouTube, uh, is to run through the Gretna City Park uh, public meeting slides that were presented yesterday at Mellot Park um, and provide those people who were not able to attend that meeting uh, an understanding of that slide content. In addition to this video that will accompany those slides, uh, we will also provide a direct web link to uh, that full set of PDFs for people to view uh, at their discretion. Um, certainly you can send comments my way at any point. Uh, those have been posted or my contact has been posted alongside uh, all of our Facebook postings uh, and will be available on the website uh, for those people to direct any questions or comments that they have uh, regarding these slides going forward. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And we'll go ahead and get started uh, on the first slide. We've got about 18 of these and I'll try to make it uh, as seamless as possible moving forward here. So this first page uh, and the first three slides are, are recycled from some prior public meetings, but um, the entire Gretna City Park project that we are doing, uh, it overall fits within our Gretna Resilience District, which was a district that was created by the City Council in, I believe, 2017 uh, to begin positioning uh, projects that incorporate sort of best management practices around flood risk reduction, uh, but also uh, think creatively about how to address other deficits within these two neighborhoods of Jonestown and Bellevue. Um, in 2018, we were awarded approximately 5.6 million uh, through the Louisiana Strategic Adaptations for Future Environments program, uh, which uh, tried to find sort of showcase projects to begin displaying what uh, kind of innovative new infrastructure looked like that was incorporating uh, best practices around flood risk reduction, but also thinking creatively about uh, ecological conditions um, and a number of other infrastructure that demands that we have on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so this is the first project that will hit the ground that's part of the, the uh, Gretna Resilience District and is focused on Gretna City Park. Um, subsequent projects uh, are focused on the 25th Street Canal and targeted in the uh, Jonestown neighborhood. Um, and we are just sort of beginning design on those and we'll be broaching the public as, as we move forward and have concepts to present for people to review. Uh, the second slide here is really just a, a kind of overview of existing conditions and what the park's current sort of assets and, and conditions are uh, as they stand today. Um, the next slide here, which is discussing history and ecology, is really trying to frame uh, what our design team, who's listed there at the bottom of each slide, we've got Wagner and Ball uh, as the prime, Carbo and Batcher as subs for landscape and civil support. Um, but this, this slide, I think, really provides an overview of, of what their uh, design philosophy is in approaching the site. And that is to think think about flood mitigation needs, but also think about uh, things like ecological restoration alongside of that. And as we sort of get into these slides, you'll have a better understanding of precisely what that means. Uh, slide four is a general overview of what the proposed conditions are uh, for the site. Um, you'll notice here items E and D uh, where we've got uh, sort of sunken meadows and lagoons uh, have shifted from previous public meetings where initially there was uh, a greater emphasis in the southern portions of the park. And that comes out of uh, after doing kind of full tree canopy and species evaluations throughout the park, uh, having an understanding that the existing forested conditions where D and E currently are uh, were far less desirable than some of the other forested conditions elsewhere in the park. And so for the design team in their approach and, and using a kind of low impact philosophy, really wanted to strive to, to minimize uh, the good quality, you know, tree canopy and habitats that are already there um, and, or minimize impacts on them and only really 
uh, disrupt those areas uh, that 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 had uh, you know extensive invasive sp species or trees that were sort of declining and um, and really not of quality to preserve. Um, and what you've got here is is kind of a continuation in the design process of, of what has been going back since we first engaged Tulane University for uh, for Gretna City Park, but but really having an emphasis on these already existing uh, retention ponds that are there, um, and then emphasizing the Clare uh, Avenue entrance, which is item C here, as well as the Mason Avenue entrance, uh, Lafayette Street entrance, and the interconnected pathways between them, and having destinations within the park uh, to support traffic on those pathways. I'm sorry, pedestrian traffic on those pathways. Um, item G uh, is is uh, really the existing kind of uh, empty field conditions that are part of the park, and and what you see here, these sort of gray areas uh, that are in the periphery. Uh, the design team is choosing to use a lot of the excavated material um, that say comes from excavation associated with the creation of lagoons and meadows in this quadrant of the park and using those earthen berms to frame particular experiences say around the fields um, or use them selectively in other areas to, to create uh, design and view corridors uh, that, that support the overall intent of the project. Item number five or slide number five here uh, is just showing uh, what the park will look like in typical conditions here. So you're seeing the, the lagoon and meadow and expression of berms um, under dry conditions, and then the flood mit mitigation component. So where relative to today's water boundaries, where we are adding additional storage within the park. Uh, slide number six is really the first uh, sort of piece of the puzzle. This is the, the entrance along Claire where there's a existing weir and concrete apron and then this sort of deteriorated U drive that we have now. Um, and what this is showing here is, is the kind of overall concept plan for how the design team intends to approach this, um, which is to provide a, some, some sort of low impact parking. Here you've got permeable surfaces and heavy uh, sort of tree canopy around that parking as well as um, improvements to that existing weir structure with shade canopies for fishing and, and such, um, and also the inclusion of a, a kayak launch uh, within this section of the park. Um, here are some sort of more images. These are the, on the top page here, we have the existing uh, kind of rendered versions of how they are proposing to transform that weir structure, uh, as well as some precedent images from uh, work that's specific to these firms that they've already completed. For instance, this one is a, a visitor center, uh, I believe in St. Charles Parish, uh, that uses the same material palette that they're proposing uh, for the renovations to the existing weir structure. Moving on to slide number eight, uh, what we're looking at here is a proposed Ma uh, Mason Street entrance. Um, and you can see this is kind of a, you know, generally a, a, a pedestrian access point from this side of the neighborhood off of Mason Street uh, and really trying to just kind of formalize that entrance a little bit with signage, uh, maybe some select parking, uh, additional trees, um, but that overall, you know, creates continuity and a gateway into the park uh, for, for people who will use it, but that's really intended to, to be kind of a neighborhood point of entrance first uh, an entrance where, you know, we would have people coming from with other parts of the city or even the region. The Lafayette Street entrance is another, um, you know, entrance into the pathway network at the park and, and similar concepts to both the Mason and Claire versions uh, is providing some supplemental parking, you know, with the permeable surfaces, with the, with the shaded tree canopy, um, and also some, some additional parking opportunities uh, for Bellevue Park as well. Uh, you might think of it as a, a sort of shared parking condition between the improvements that we're proposing for Gretna City Park and um, the existing facilities at Bellevue Park.
So the next couple of slides are really kind of covering what the intent of the, the lagoon and meadow are. Uh, there is an existing pathway through there and you'll see um, on the bottom here, sort of the different uh, areas that are gonna remain as sort of trees and forests uh, where they intend to, to provide meadow plantings um, and then where they intend to establish new trees along uh, edges of those pathways as well as along the, the uh, Clare Street exposure right here. And so uh, I don't, or slide number 11 is, is really just providing sort of precedent images as to uh, what kind of ecological landscapes they're looking to recreate uh, that are native and appropriate to the, the eco region that we are in. Um, and different planting palettes that the uh, design team is working with to, to um, implement and have a, a finished product that after establishment uh, begins to take on the character of both this slide 11 and slide 12 here as well. Uh, slide 13 is showing the proposed pathway networks that will be defined through the space. Uh, you see here we've got the Lafayette Street entrance, here a Mason Street entrance, and then here the Claire entrance. And then uh, it's color coded to show the types of pathway applications that are currently under consideration for those areas. So uh, it's a combination of, of, of pathways. Some, in some instances, it's mulch path, mulch path uh, through a forest. In some instances, we'll have you know, structural bridges over waterways. In some instances, we'll have you know, uh, a gravel path um, or simply a mown path. And so these are the different sort of inspirational images that are really driving uh, how they're approaching those conditions with respect to pathways as you would meander through the park. Uh, slide number 14 uh, is really the first addressing the new pavilion that's, that's being proposed and it's sort of at this juncture of the proposed new lagoon and meadows as well as the existing uh, retention areas that are on site already. Uh, what you'll see here um, is the island that is in the sort of major retention area of the park um, and that remains preserved uh, because of the important uh, rookery bird, you know, bird rookery that exists. Uh, on that island and, and not wanting to disrupt the activities of, of that bird population. Um, but these, you can see right here, this is again that same island. Um, here is the weir structure and circular drive off of Clare and the proposed location of the pavilion uh, and its orientation relative to um, the existing conditions in the park. And you can kind of see here again uh, the landscape palettes palettes that they, and material palettes that they will try to mimic uh, with the construction of that pavilion. The next slide is a little bit more detailed uh, version. This is the existing uh, rendering as to where they are in, in the design process um, and, and other precedent images for inspiration and showing similar material palettes uh, that we're trying to mimic as we move through this site. Um, I think one of the most important things that, that we want to point out here is that they're really trying to, to emphasize this view corridor from the retrofitted weir on Clare Avenue towards that pavilion uh, and that being a, a, a very much an expressed view corridor, uh, both from a landscape perspective, but also architectural perspective within the park. Uh, moving on to slide 16. Um, these are uh, right now where we have a, an earthen uh, sort of bridge between the two primary ponds. Um, we are proposing from a water quality standpoint and both from a to, to add additional stormwater uh, retention to cut that earthen berm and, and, and bridge it um, and then put two uh, docks that would extend into either direction of that uh, water feature. Um, that would be centered around that particular point. Um, this is, you know, these docks are, are intended to be sort of minimally intrusive and provide enough space underneath them uh, so that a kayaker uh, or, you know, someone else who's, who's using the water recreationally uh, can get through, uh, get through, paddle underneath those docks. 
Uh, item 17 is again uh, similar to what you've seen in some of these other slides, but uh, kind of proposed structural sections of both the bridges, docks, the retrofitted weir, and the pavilion, but also the material palette uh, that the the landscape and, and design professionals are intending to incorporate into this particular space. And item 18 uh, is in response to the, the investment that the city is putting in to Gretna City Park um, and trying to have some design continuity in it between the existing residences on Mason Street and the, the efforts that we're taking on in the park is a proposed fencing standard that the council uh, is considering uh, that would basically try to provide uh, some visual uniformity along the fencing condition relative to Mason Street and Gretna City Park. And so right now, if you went along that condition, you would see considerable variation in the types of fencing applications that are there. Um, as well as to conditions of yards and, and storage of, of, of equipment or any number of other items that may you know, be in, in someone's backyard. And so what this standard would do is over time, as people replace more than 50% of that sort of rear yard exposure, um, you know, directly facing city park, is to set a standard whereby that new fence has to come into conformance uh, with, with the, the, the images here on the bottom. Um, so some form of aluminum um, type fence that, that has a certain transparent element to it um, and provides that sort of continuity uh, along that entire exposure. Um, again, this is something that the council is just considering, but is certainly looking for feedback uh, as they move forward, uh, both with the Gretna City Park investment, but also uh, thinking about how to better position the relationship between the neighborhood and the park going forward. Um, that's all I've got from a slide perspective uh, for this morning. Uh, outside of that, uh, our design team is moving extremely quickly. Uh, we're anticipating to have a complete design package um, at the end of August, early September, uh, and are really shooting for uh, having this project under construction uh, towards the end of 2020, early 2021 at the latest and appear to be moving in a trajectory that is going to satisfy those timelines um, with a, a pretty high degree of certainty. So again, if you have any comments or questions, please reach out to the, the, the uh, inf contact information that's listed on the website alongside this, uh, this recording and happy to discuss and certainly looking for feedback to the extent that um, there's anything critical that we're missing here and hoping that this is a uh, an exciting project for for the neighborhood and, and definitely for the for the city and one that showcases uh, really what the possibilities around kind of thinking creatively around infrastructure applications uh, moving forward within our community, southeast Louisiana, entire state and uh, southeastern United States. And, and just an aside there. So the similarly to to the stormwater principles that we're incorporating with this project um, are the same types of principles that we're currently incorporating uh, into the project that is is progressing in front of City Hall, our downtown drainage project, which utilizes uh, what we call green infrastructure uh, to hold retained water in place and ultimately um, do that so that it does not overstress uh, our already overstressed uh, local drainage network. And that retaining in place and detaining in place is, is something that we can do um, to really slow the impact of, of, of the increasing uh, intensity and frequency of storms that we're seeing in Southeast Louisiana and across the country. Again, don't hesitate to reach out and I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. Um, be in touch.